What's up plant lovers? What you're looking at is the bloom of the red barren peach tree. And this little guy is just waking up. So I expect plenty more flowers and maybe a little bit of fruit this summer. The, the fruit becomes ripe around August and it's a, a bit of a late season bloomer. But as you can see, these red flowers really make it stand out and can be quite different in your yard. Give it a little different uh, different uh, vibe than some of your other stone fruit, like this one over here, which is all white flowers. It's a nice contrast. All right, guys, get yourself a Red Baron peach tree. They're excellent. What's up, plant lovers? Getting a late February hailstorm. San Diego. It's raining in San Diego. It's a miracle. All right, y'all. Hope you're having a good day. Cause it's storming here. What's up, plant lovers? Check this one out. It's called Okinawa spinach. And it's not a true spinach, but that's what they call it. It's grown in Asia, and it's used in a lot of cooking for stir fries, ponzu sauces. They actually do like a tempura and fry the leaves. I guess it's very popular. And it's got this cool purple on the underside, green on the top. It's very, uh, a very good plant to have in the yard because it's evergreen, so it looks like this pretty much year round. And it's super tough doesn't really have any pests that get to it and as far as I know you can eat most of the plant uh, it also has these very cool flowers which you can see are red and orange but the thing about these are they smell awful like a funky cheese like really bad so that's kind of odd but it also kind of makes it unique all right guys have a good day What's up plant lovers? Check this one out. This is an air plant called a Tillandsia and it's pushing some flowers here. They're really tall, really interesting. They'll be red when they bloom. A Tillandsia is an air plant, so you don't plant it in soil. You actually just leave it out. I just strap it to a piece of wood here and it does quite well. And some filtered light. Uh, I have another one over here. This is Richard the cat. Another one right here pushing a flower. Pretty excellent. You should get one. They're very cool. Alright y'all, have a good day. What's up plant lovers? I just got to post a win here. I picked up this uh, tree. It's called a pixie mandarin from a local nursery. And this is the first time it's produced fruit for me. And I have to say, it's excellent. It's a little, um, say sweet, not very tart, very satisfying. They're seedless. Kind of has a firm texture, a little bit almost like crunchy. Um, not not like juicy, like it'll leak all over your hand, but nice balance. And uh, listen, I have this navel orange tree over here, which is excellent. And I can say uh, this is quite, quite good and perhaps significantly better. All right, well, get yourself a pixie mandarin. All right, guys, have a good day. What's up, plant lovers? Check this one out. This is the Panamint Nectarine Tree. And it's in full bloom here in March. And this is self-fertile, and it's great for those who live by the coast who have warmer winters because it needs a relatively low amount of chill hours to produce. So it's a great tree. All right, get yourself a Panamint Nectarine Tree. Have a good day. This is Canadian nigricans, the black coral pea vine, and it's native to Western Australia. It produces true black flowers, as you can see. I've had this plant for about eight years now, and it's about 20 feet long, and they will get about 15 feet in height. They bloom a, two times a year or so, and you can see why I like this plant. Just absolutely stunning black flowers black and yellow flowers, I should say. So there you go, Canadia nigricans.
Grevillea superb. One of the most underrated plants in Southern California. They do not need any fertilizer. And they have prolific blooms. And they attract hummingbirds, orioles, and other nectar-eating creatures. Consider getting some Grevillea for your garden. What's up plant lovers? What you're looking at is rock rose and it's a perfect way to add a little color to your landscape. This uh, plant doesn't need a lot of water and it's a prolific bloomer. Look at all these flowers. It's really hitting hard. And it's similar to like a hibiscus where the bloom has a really short life and by the end of the day these petals will just drop off but it produces so many flowers that you'll have new ones that come out every single day. Here's a bloom from yesterday, right here, it just drops right off. And you won't need to water this very much. It actually hates a lot of water, it'll probably die. But it's a fantastic, good drought tolerant plant. And uh, maybe go ahead and check out your local nursery and try to find some rock rose. All right, have a good day. What's up plant lovers? Check this one out. These are red bush beans and they're still in the seedling stage, but they'll be pushing beans soon. And they're looking very healthy. All right, y'all, have a good day. Look at these absolutely gorgeous Aeoniums in bloom. This is Aeonium Plum Purdy. And you can see why I like them so much. Look at the cluster of flowers. Bees love these plants, by the way. Pollinators, I should say. So hopefully you can check some Aeoniums out soon and see these beautiful, beautiful death blooms. All right, take care. This is Salandra Maxima, the cup of gold vine. Hopefully you can see why they call it the cup of gold. Look at that. Beautiful flower. And it's large too. Salandra Maxima, the cup of gold. This is the death bloom of Aeonium Sunburst. It's a unique looking variety of Aeonium and look at the color of these flowers. I find them very interesting, very unique. So this is a death bloom of Aeonium Sunburst. What's up, plant lovers? Check out this Tillandsia bloom, which is an air plant. And this is what the plant looks like right down here. And these blooms take weeks, if not months, to develop, and they, they really last a long time. So it's a really long-living flower. Really excellent peak bloom right now. So what are rain chains? Well, rain chains are artistic downspouts for your rain gutters. And they've been used in Japan and South America architecture for hundreds of years. Now there's several different designs here. You could get ones that are just a loop design like that, but they are mostly made out of metal, usually copper. And you could either get chains or loops like that shape, or this is called a cup design. You can see this one is made out of copper and it is a cup design in the shape of a flower.
Okay, so as you can see, it's done. It sounds really soothing. This one, it spreads out a little bit. You can see what I mean by kind of the splashing. But this was literally like a 10 minute install. So nice and easy. And now we have a beautiful new rain chain and we can hear some soothing sounds during our next rainstorm. Thanks for checking out String of Watermelons, Curio Herianus, formerly Senecio Herianus, and it's best known for its stiff trailing stems that will grow over a foot in time, like you could see here. And on those stems, it's covered with these really beautiful egg-shaped leaves that are lime green in color. Let's get a closer look. You can see them here. So again, the stems are a bit thicker than most of my string of plants. And what I mean by these egg-shaped leaves, the, the stripes there, what happens is if you give this more sunlight, they're gonna get purplish tones and it's absolutely gorgeous. You can see here what I mean by that. This is my string of pearls variegated and it's about to bloom. And you can see those beautiful purplish tones on the flowers developing. Look at the size of this. It's almost two feet across. And this is Aeonium arboreum. And it's a hybrid called the Purple Giant. Now, I found it in San Diego, and I don't know much about it. There's little to no information online, but it's absolutely a stunning Aeonium. You can see how large it is. Huge. And I love how it's green in the center, and it will fade to this really dark, interesting, beautiful color kind of purplish black. Now, if I had to guess, I would say one of the parents is Atropurpureum. But again, I'm not 100% sure. I've had this plant for about three years and I found it at a local nursery and it was labeled Purple Giant. Now this is Kensington Pride and it's doing really well, getting quite a bit of sunlight here in zone 9B in Southern California. Now I'm watering it every other day right now as it gets used to being in the soil and all these mango seedlings are doing just great. Now in addition here, I have a few other unique mango seedlings on the right, Thai Giant. Don't know much about that one, but Leo grew that one from seed. Here's a, I believe a Mexican variety, Toto Santos, which is another beautiful mango seedling here, thriving. I'm gonna plant these here this week. This one is Turpentine. Now, the reason why I have this one is it doesn't sound like it's the best tasting one, but it's a great root stock. So Leo Manuel recommended using Turpentine as a root stock. You can see the beautiful leaves. Look at the color of those. Absolutely. Sumo citrus, also known as decopon. This is a variety of Satsuma orange that is a hybrid of Kiyomi orange and crossed with pokan. 16.6% of this fruit is sugar. So that's a great, great score. I mean, even for red flesh dragon fruit, which we like to eat and review as well on our channel, it so bricks about the same percentage.
just a gorgeous, delicious fruit. These are available from about January to April, and then you have to wait the rest of the year to find them again. So there you go, Sumo Citrus. I give it two thumbs up. I would give it a nine and a half out of 10. It's one of my favorite. It's just a gorgeous, delicious fruit. Good morning, fellow gardeners. This is Paul with an update on my String of Succulents collection. You can see my favorite one is in bloom right now. That's the Variegated String of Pearls. Absolutely a stunning plant. I haven't had it for very long, but you can see it's in full bloom and the flowers smell just like clove. Up next here, you can see this is my string of rubies. Some people call it ruby necklace. It will turn more reddish color if it's cold or if you give it more sunlight. It's a beautiful contrast of colors between green and this beautiful kind of purple. I like this plant a lot. This is the ruby necklace or string of rubies. Up next here is the string of raindrops. You can see it's a different shape than the string of pearls. And this one likes to bloom as well. Bloomed about a month ago in November. Greetings, fellow gardeners. This is Paul. Thanks for checking out Leucospermum cordifolium yellow bird. That's the cultivar. Now it's also known as the nodding pincushion and it's native to South Africa. And I've had this plant about eight years now and they say it gets about four to five feet in height like you see here, and seven to eight feet or more in width and time. Now the flowers bloom in April for several weeks, and you can see they have this really distinctly domed shape. You can use these as cut flowers. So if you cut them, you can put them in a vase for several weeks. And that's one of the best things about them. They're a very long lasting cut flower. And they'll get more yellow as they open up. Thanks for checking out Euphorbia Tragonia Royal Red. It's a beautiful Euphorbia, a burgundy cultivar, and it will grow nine or more feet in time. Also known as a good luck plant, Royal Red. Or some call it the African milk tree because it produces a white sap that's actually toxic and irritant. So be careful when you trim this plant or mess with it. Very interesting new growth, and it's an African native. It's a very, very unique looking plant. My favorite things about it are that it's three-sided, so it's a bit, kind of reminds me of dragon fruit in a way, but it has these beautiful long leaves, the spines, and just a stunning, unique coloration. Mine gets a lot of shade outdoors, so it's more green than burgundy. And thanks for checking out Apuntia monocantha variegata, Joseph's coat. Now this stunning succulent is native to Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, and more. And it's naturalized in Australia and South Africa. And you can see here what I like about it most is its beautiful variegation. It's fast growing. It will grow over 20 feet tall and 12 feet wide in time. And its stem segments are really oblong shaped. Look at how long they are. It's very interesting. Look at this largest one on this plant. And they'll grow over a foot tall and they'll be about five inches wide. Now the variegation is really interesting because you'll see different shades. It will be kind of white, it'll be creamy. This plant is native to South Africa and Namibia and they're thick sword shaped leaves and they grow in kind of a triangular shape in threes. Now the margins have very fine white teeth. Hopefully you can see them in there on the edges of the leaves. And then they have this beautiful dark green banding with the white spots. It's a really slow growing petite aloe and I just find it absolutely beautiful. Now the flower stalk will grow in the spring, and you can see it produces these really interesting salmon color flowers. Now they have a light, sweet fragrance, and they're just really cool looking in my opinion. One of my favorite little aloes. This is the Pride of Madeira, Echium candicans, 
And the flower is actually crested on this plant, see? So really stunning, really unique. This is what it looks like when the flower itself crests. See how flat it is? Now cresting is a mutation that occurs during cell division where the plant grows linear or flat instead of radial, which is round. So you can see the difference here. This is a standard bloom from the Pride of Madeira. And this is the first ever that I've ever seen where the bloom's crested. Today we're gonna talk about the powder puff tree. Now I call it the red powder puff and there's over 150 cultivated species. And this one is the most popular. This is Caliandra hematocephala. It's native to Bolivia and it's known for these shockingly beautiful red flowers, as you can see here. Look at that. And they become in full bloom in the winter in Southern California. I'm in zone 9B. And see what they look like when they're developing. Really beautiful. And then after they've been bloomed, after they've been spent, they'll leave behind this kind of a hairy, puffy ball. The foliage is really beautiful as well, as you can see. The flowers don't really smell, in my opinion. They don't really have much of a scent, but that's okay. Thanks for checking out Strawberry Guava, Cidium catalanum. It's native to southeastern Brazil, and I've had this tree for about eight years now, maybe nine. It's been in this location, and now it has several fruit. Now this tree is invasive in wetter climates like Hawaii. It's actually a really big threat to Hawaii's native forests and habitats. But not here in Southern California zone 9B, it's too dry. Now it's often cultivated for these beautiful fruit here that you can see. Really bright red. So you can see they're soft and delicate and juicy inside of a white fleshed, translucent with seeds. Really a delicious fruit. And this is the lime caviar, so watch this. You give it a squeeze and it's gonna burst. Just like that. And this is used in a lot of gourmet food. And the texture is very, very unique. That's the best thing about it. It does pop like caviar, although I've never eaten caviar. It's not my thing, but from what they say, it's very similar. And as I eat it, it just reminds me of a really tangy, beautiful lime on the mild side. Now, eating it straight is not very enjoyable, although it's not bad. It's not intense. You know, if I was starving, I would actually, I could survive off these for quite a while. What's up, plant lovers? Hey, check this one out. This is a cherimoya tree, and I grew it from seed. Actually, a seed I got from a cherimoya from the grocery store, so we'll see what happens. But the fruit is delicious. If you haven't tried one, it's really wonderful. Kind of tastes like bubble gum, actually, so it's kind of odd flavor, but it looks kind of gross, but tastes really amazing. And the leaves have this really cool velvety feel to them but it's a great tree and it's about to graduate to the next level so we're gonna put it in a bigger pot all right y'all have a good day orbia variegata it's a soft stem succulent and it's also known as the carrion plant carrion flower because these flowers smell like dead animals or decaying flesh it's really really gross and stinky if you put your nose up to them they are beautiful though, and there's different cultivars with different looking flowers. You can see how they develop. And they're also called the starfish plant, the toad plant, or the toad cactus, and a few other names. This is what the flower buds look like as they're developing. If you treat this plant right, it's going to bloom in the fall and early October in Southern California, where I live in zone 9B. Now they 
never get wider than an inch and they're very, like I said, soft stem. So they're more of a tender succulent than some of the other varieties that I grow. So I like to just leave them in a hanging pot like you see here. The thing I like about it most is that it has basically this bicolor effect. First, the flower buds come out this beautiful pink color. And then as they open, there are these really stunning little flowers that are very, very intensely fragrant. To me, this is the best smelling jasmine plant out of all the jasmine I grow. So I call it sort of the tricolor effect. If you look here, I'll zoom out a bit. You can see the green foliage, the pink, and the beautiful white flowers. Now, I really wish you could smell these because it's just the most beautiful, intense, fragrant smell of jasmine. If we leave our windows open in the evening, we can smell it too, or the morning. So just a great plant. In my experience, it likes filtered sunlight. Today we're going to talk about Grevillea Honey Gem. I've had this for about four years and it's producing a beautiful flower that you can see right here. Now it is a little more golden when it first opens, but it's really beautiful nonetheless. Look at that. This is a stunning cultivar from Queensland, Australia, and it's a fast grower. It'll grow 12 and possibly up to 20 feet in time. And here you could see a flower that is in development. I find those really interesting. I think they're beautiful. Sometimes caterpillars will eat these, so be careful. Now, this flower in bloom, the color is just unique. The texture is really soft. Orioles love the nectar. Hummingbirds love the nectar as well. I'll occasionally see some bees on here, but they don't seem quite as interested in these types of flowers. All right, here's another large one, Aeonium urbicum, dinner plate. There's also one called salad bowl that looks really similar, but this dinner plate will get about 17 to 18 inches like you saw in width. Or I guess I should say diameter, right? Now you can see there's some scarring from the hail we had in the winter. So that's what the hawking mark or peck marks are. And then this one is kind of shiny, more than others. So you can see it does reflect light which is another beautiful aspect about this large Aeonium. And it has been shooting out some pups. I've moved a few throughout the yard. So it's definitely a very happy, vigorous plant. Aeonium urbicum dinner plate. Definitely one of the largest Aeoniums in my collection. What's up, plant lovers? Check this one out. This is the Moringa tree. and The bloom is pretty underrated. It's very pretty. All right, y'all have a good day. What's up, plant lovers? So here's an update on this foxtail guave that's going through its death bloom. Foxtail guaves are monocarpic, so this floret, this big floret right here is gonna die off. and gonna look like that in about a year. So it has this amazing bloom that will grow probably, I don't know, six to eight inches a day. So I'll do a few shorts and keep you all updated because it's pretty cool, kind of fascinating. But that is the foxtail aguave in mid bloom. All right, y'all. Have a good day. All right, check out this Pridemidaria. It's crested, which means that it's had a mutation where it's flat growth. 
as you can see here. It's very interesting. Now this plant in Southern California is semi-deciduous, so this is when it looks its worst. And here's the mother plant that's been crested for about 10 years now. Really interesting, knotty, knotted growth, I guess you could say. So there you go. Look at this stunning Brazilian native, Ripsalis elliptica. And it's got its first bloom that's open. Check it out. Look at how beautiful this thing is. Very petite little flowers. Love the structure of this plant. But man, what a huge wave of little flower buds. How cool. Ripsalis elliptica. What's up, plant lovers? Hey, check this out. We have a very confused Santa Rosa plum tree here. This thing's supposed to be going into dormancy and it's blooming. Pretty weird. Not only is it blooming, but it actually set some fruit, which is so bizarre. So, I don't know, I guess a little warm weather can confuse a tree, but we'll see what happens. See if we can get back in sync. All right, y'all. Have a good day. So you can see I grow this plant under a canopy in some well-draining soil that's mostly DG in our arid environment. And it does really, really well. So I just have a few drippers on it and it's quite happy, as you can see. Now the new shoots come out green, but in time, they'll turn that golden color, giving its name golden goddess as you can see it's really beautiful younger branches are more green so you can compare and contrast the differences there when they're really new they're going to come out really green like you can see here so i like this plant a lot because of the variation and it does require well draining soil in our experience our soil is dg and you can grow this plant in a container as well Now you can give it more sun, 